Hello everyone, this is author Scotty McCoy, and I am the author of the Ultimate Halloween Trivia Book, both 1st and 2nd edition, and I am writing another book titled The Ultimate Slasher Movie Encyclopedia. And I have on the phone with me Jeffrey Landman, and he played Billy in Halloween 5, The uh, Revenge of Michael Myers. Hi Jeffrey, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing great. Um, so I have a couple questions for you, and um, so the first one is... Uh, did you have an audition for Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers? And if so, how did it go and what was it like? Uh, so, yes, I had a series of auditions. I believe there were around three total in New York. I was uh, living in New York at the time and appearing on Broadway in Les Miserables. And I was just brought into audition. I was put on tape. Um, I believe mostly what they were looking for in the audition process was um, to see if I could convincingly put across the stuttering. Right. So that was sort of what most of the focus during the auditions was on, was the stuttering. I was put on tape with the casting director, and then a couple weeks later, I was in Salt Lake City filming the movie. Awesome. That's great. Um, the next question I have is, uh, how did you get your start into acting? Um, I had always wanted to be a performer from a very young age, which okay. is odd to say because we're talking about something I did when I was 10. Right. <laughs> but when I was very, very young, I'd always had an interest, and my mother just sort of start me on my path. Okay. Took me to an open call that she heard about on television for the new Mickey Mouse Club, and I went to the audition, got called back. From there, got my first agent, and my next audition was for Les Mis on Broadway. So I, I, I just always had this passion for performing and at a very young age was able to manifest that into a four decade long career. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. Um, so what was it like working with Danielle Harris? Oh, she was wonderful. Still is. Um, <laughs> you know, there was a lot. I, I always say I, it, it's shocking to me when I go back and watch the movie, how much was put on her, right. especially in number five, when she was carrying the whole movie. Right. And she was wonderful to me. And we spent a lot of time together. We, we were brought to Salt Lake a week before the rest of the cast for rehearsals. Mm -hmm. And she was wonderful about sort of teaching me. I'd never been on a film set before. I didn't know how things worked. And she was wonderful about, showing me what to do and how, you know, this sort of new world for me works. Right. And I think, you know, obviously her performance in the movie is so wonderful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she was just, it was great to just be around her and soak up that energy and feed off her, follow her lead, if you will. Right. Now, do you still keep in touch with Danielle Harris? Not really. Um, I see her, you know, maybe once a year or so. We see each other at cons, or I have run into her at a bar once or twice in L.A. But, you know, she is a, a new mom. She has she just had her second child. Right. And, you know, it's, it's hard to remember that back then when we shot Halloween, you know, there were no cell phones. There was no right. email. It wasn't as easy to keep in touch with people <laughs> as it currently is. Exactly. Exactly. And we were, you know, 11 years old and lived in different states. Right. True. So uh, did you uh, work or uh, with or speak with Donald Pleasant at all off or, um, often on set? And if so, um, how was he? And what was it like getting to be graced with such an iconic actor? Well, I did have a lot. I, I worked with him a lot during the movie, most of which was cut. Right. There was a lot of uh, stuff showing Billy during the daytime that mm -hmm. ended up not making it into the final film. But Donald was wonderful. Um, you know, he was very patient with us, sat with us at dinners, et cetera, and told all these wonderful stories about his long and illustrious career. Unfortunately, I was 11 years old. Right. I did not really grasp, you know, what who he was at mm -hmm. the time. I wish I could certainly go back in time and and be at that dinner table now as an adult and take yeah. it all in. But he was wonderful. Um, I think some of the older cast members had more experiences with him because obviously we were children. Right. But he was wonderful. And, you know, I'm so grateful because, you know, obviously he unfortunately passed away during the creation of number six right. so i do feel very lucky that not only did i get to be in a halloween movie but i got to be in a halloween movie with donald pleasance exactly he was he definitely is an icon a legend not just for acting but also in the uh, horror genre and halloween genre alone mm -hmm. 
Um, I might butcher this name. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, how was Dominique Othan Gerard as a director? You got it right. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, he was wonderful. You know, like everyone else, he... I always say, you know, film set sort of runs from its director down. Right. And he was really, really aware and cautious of the fact that Danielle and I were kids. Mm -hmm. So everyone was really aware of that fact and went out of their way to make sure that we were taken care of. Right. And I really appreciated that. Um, you know, he made sure that Don Shanks or Don Shanks took care of this as well, that the mask came off every chance they got. Right. So that Danielle and I wouldn't get too scared. Yeah. And Dominique was always very great about explaining what he wanted out of a scene as opposed to just saying, you know, do this. Right. He was wonderful. You know, he talked to me about why they made the decision to give Billy a stutter and things like that, that, you know, really in my opinion, deepened my performance and allowed me to sort of grasp the big picture of the movie, not just what I was doing. Right, because if Billy didn't have the stutter, he would be like one of those like ordinary kids, you know, that is basically, you know, at this, you know, clinic and this type of thing. But the stutter just brought a whole new dimension to the character and it brought out your talents as an actor, especially as a child actor, to bring this character well, also, alive. A, a big part of the stutter had to do with the idea that Jamie was unable to communicate, and right. the one person she could communicate with, Billy, mm -hmm. also had trouble communicating. Exactly. Exactly. So, so, speaking about being a child actor, we do know that, obviously, you, you were a child actor. So, what was it like being a child actor in such a demanding industry? Um, I, I, I don't know. It's kind of hard to answer that question because I don't know any differently. Okay. Um, people always ask me, like, if I felt that you know, my childhood was different or bizarre or strange, but I don't know anything else. I only know what it's like to be a child in showbiz. Right. That said, um, I, again, it's just what I was doing and what I was passionate about. So I didn't think about the enormity of everything. It exactly. just didn't occur to me. I was just happy to be working and doing what I love. And I was very lucky in my career that I always sort of, I really ended up in these wonderful projects that were a little, you know, high profile and difficult roles. Right. So, again, that's all I know is, you know, if you're going to do something like be in a movie or be in a Broadway show, you may as well be the one who has a lot to do because that's more fun. Exactly. So what was the best part about filming Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers, and what was the worst? The worst, I'll go first. The worst was we <laughs> shot at night. And I know it was like April, May, June, but it was freezing. Right. We were up all night. Uh, we would usually like wake up at six in the morning and then, sh uh, uh, sorry, six in at night and shoot until six in the morning. Wow. And, you know, uh, uh, that's my biggest memory of like, ah, this is hell on earth, was just <laughs> being up all night and being exhausted all the time. But that's also the exciting part. Right. And I think the best part was truly getting to be a part of something so iconic and so beloved that here I am, 30 years later, still talking about it. Exactly. I don't, I don't take that for granted, and I don't take that lightly that, you know, people still want to talk to me about it after 30 years. And how lucky am I, and how wonderful is that, that I have that experience mm -hmm that I'm part of film history. I'm part of one of the biggest franchises ever. Certainly <laughs> the biggest one in horror. Yep. And, you know, I, I lucked into it. And I, I love that. And, yeah, that's that to me, that's the best part of, of being at Halloween. That's great. So um, I'm going to add a question in before this next one, actually. Um, do you, we, you obviously said you see Daniel Harris at some conventions. Do you do conventions often? And if so, um, how many do you do a year? Do you have any upcoming, that type of thing? I don't do as many as I'd like to, just because okay. of scheduling, etc. cetera. Um, I do as many as I can, as many as I can get booked on, because I love them. Okay. I think they are so fun. And it's a great, great way to connect with the fans, and that's what we do this for. Right. I don't have any coming up. I just did the uh, Halloween, I think the official name was Halloween 40 Years, okay. um, which we did in Pasadena about a month ago, and that was wonderful. Um, 
Yeah, like I said, I'd love to do more just right. because I love that interaction with the fans. Exactly. But, you know, it's, it's, I am a working actor and I have, you know, other obligations and other <laughs> priorities. Exactly. Um, what was your most memorable moment while filming Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers? Probably the entire two weeks that we shot the car chase sequence. Okay. Because it was, you know, we shot the movie out of order. Right. And we even shot the car chase sequence out of order. So sometimes it would be the first half of the night you're doing this part of the chase. Then the next half of the night you're doing this part of the chase. Plus, in the movie, that's the part of the movie where stuff really starts to happen. Right. So when they were blowing up the car, you know, they made sure we were all there on set that day to, mm -hmm. to you know, get to experience that and be a part of it. So that's sort of not even just the car chase. I'm going to take that back and say the entire Tower Farm sequence. <laughs> right was very fun to film because it was sort of scattershot that, you know, now we're filming the party, now we're filming the car chase, and it's pretty much, I mean, Rachel's dead by then, but right. beyond that, it's pretty much the only time in the movie where everyone is together. Right. So I really, I when I think about filming the movie, I think about that and I think about the clinic stuff, but, right. you know, being in, in the farm really is, was the most fun and that's the time i think of when we were all there we were eating together right. we were you know in the car together that's sort of was my favorite part of filming that whole period awesome i'm gonna add another question and actually that i thought of um so we know that your character was dressed as a pirate during halloween um was that your idea or was that in initially in the script that, that was all in the script that was all in the script all all right. of all of the costumes that we wore in terms of our Halloween costumes okay. were all designated in the script. Okay. And then I know right before filming started, there was some switching of, I think Tina was supposed to be the, the, the uh, what's the word, the devil in okay. the first, in the first script. They changed that to Sammy because Tina, you know, they didn't want the devil, the good girl to be the devil. Right. So there was a little bit of switching around for some of the adults' costumes. But in terms of Danielle and I as the pirate and the princess, that was always there from day one. Okay, awesome. Um, so what was it like with work, working with uh, Wendy Kaplan, who played Tina? Oh, she's wonderful. Um, you know, we, we actually didn't really interact all that much in the movie. I think we only had about two or three scenes together. Right. And I think most of them got cut. Okay. But she was, you know, she's wonderful. You know, again, like Danielle, it, it's it's a lot to think about how much she was sort of carrying the movie. You right. know, with Rachel dying, she kind of became the heart of the movie. Right. And yes. I think her performance is so lovely. And when she dies for Jamie, it, you know, it sacrifices herself for Jamie mm -hmm. to live. It's so heartbreaking. Yes. And I think that's, you know, as an as, as an actress, that's a really hard thing. Mm -hmm. to get across in a horror movie right. when you're a new character and you die tragically and the audience, you know, feels that. It's very mm -hmm. hard to to do, and I think she did that wonderfully. She did, and it's funny because I know, um, like, everybody knew Rachel, you know, um, mm -hmm. Rachel, we all knew her, Ellie Cornell, we all knew her from Halloween 4, so she was right. introduced, and then she was killed off, so quickly it's like oh my gosh they just killed her so what's going to happen is it going to be now just jamie but then you see tina everybody's thinking tina's going to be this final girl that's going to help jamie survive like rachel did but then tina gets killed off and it's like holy crap now what now it's just a kid and the, and her evil uncle at this point no final girl for tina exactly so it was just all Jamie, and I remember what um I had it on the one time a couple years ago. Like I watch it, you know, every year for Halloween time and that. And I had um a couple years ago I had uh, I had it on the one time, and my aunt was up here, and she never saw it before, and she seen that she just seen that whole Tower of Farm scene. Like, oh my gosh, now it's just these th this kid is left. Like, what's gonna happen here? It's like holy hey. crap. <laughs> Yeah, I think they built that all up really, really well for they the did. suspense of who's going to be the final girl. Right, and it was always the final girl was the kid. Yep. Um, so what was the environment like on set? I remember it being very fun. Um, everyone was having a good time. Obviously, we were there to work, and mm -hmm. no one was shirking on their work responsibilities. But I just remember everyone having a really good time. It. I don't remember there being a lot of stress or... Mm -hmm pressure i mean the the it was fast we shot the movie in about seven weeks right and you know it was within a year of of it was about six months after halloween <laughs> 4 had come out but i just remember everyone having a good time and enjoying the work obviously we were cold 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> but beyond that, like I just I remember having a really good time. That might be because I was a kid and I wasn't around anything else. But you know, I certainly had a great time and awesome. you know treasure those memories of being in Salt Lake. That's great. So, uh, do you have any uh, funny or uh, memorable stories from your time filming Halloween Five? Memorable or funny? Um, not particularly that I can think of. Okay. Just you know, the, the stuff I think of when I think of filming is you know right. uh, watching them blow up the car and right. just that sort of stuff was sort of the most memorable. Right. stuff i was you know I, I again being a child i was always being tutored or in rehearsals or stuff like that right um but it was a, it was a fun shoot as far as i was concerned i, I don't want to speak for anyone else right. but i had a great time and i'm really i'm really proud of the, of the movie we put out that's great and now did you have to like be on like on set like do on set schooling um yeah i had danielle and i for most of the filming, shared a like a three part trailer, okay. and how you know one part was hers, one part was mine, and then in the middle was our school. Okay. So legally, we have to go to school for three hours every day. Okay. But sometimes we would do, you know, uh, if I wasn't working, I would do six hours in one day, and then not have to go to school the next day. Oh, that'd be cool though. That's, I mean, you're li- you were living the dream though. That's the great thing. And <laughs> living I've, the dream. Yep, exactly. I have no other way. Exactly. So, I mean, if you had to be on set doing schooling, I mean, I'm, hey, I'm an actor in such a movie that had so many, you know, amazing sequels prior and a classic original. And now it's the fifth film and seeing yourself on screen. And I mean, it's one of my favorites out of the franchise. I'm not going to lie. Like, it's, I love that film. And it's just, it was so well done. And like from the beginning all the way up, like it, the way they did it and the way it was written was, had such a good storyline and a plot line, the character development, everything was great. I agree. Here, here. <laughs> so uh, what was it like working with Don Shanks, who played the iconic Michael Myers? Don's wonderful. Like I said earlier, he was so great about taking care of me and Danielle. Right. Just making sure that we were never scared. We were never in danger. We were never, you know, uh, out of the loop as to what was going on. Right. Um, and I, I so appreciate him, especially now that I'm older and I've gotten into, you know, now that I'm working with kids sometimes right. and I'm the adult, it really it takes a lot of patience and care to be that aware of the children you're working with and exactly. take that much care of them. And he was wonderful. Obviously, he's a wonderful stuntman. Mm-hmm. He is, you know, and I think I think that's what he brought to the role mm-hmm. that maybe hasn't been there before was this uh, his personal physicality. Obviously, all the men that had played Michael are wonderful stuntmen and wonderful actors. Right. But for me, especially Don being the one in the movie I'm in, I have a, I have a soft spot in my heart for his performance. Right. Of role. You're a little biased, right? <laughs> right. And he, he did a good job as Michael. He really did a good job. Um, and the fact that even though he was aware that you and Daniel were kids and the fact that he took the mask off just to let you know that, hey, it's just a movie. I'm just a stuntman, an actor, playing a character. You're not. I'm not going to hurt you. Um, this is all, you know, like it's just... You don't. There's not a lot of people that would do something like that. So it's really great yeah. that uh, that he was willing to take time off of the schedule because we know time. As they say, time is money. Like you're, you, you know, you're the more time you're doing, and if you get off the schedule, the more money you're spending to get the film done. So the right. fact obviously, is, obviously, we're not Danielle and I are not stupid. We knew right. he was just an actor. Exactly. But, you know, just that moment of like in between takes, taking off the mask. Wherein, otherwise, you know, working with adults, you might not have just that little bit of two second of, of awareness really right. meant the world to us. Exactly, and that's that's amazing. I mean, that's just that's made that it separates the good stuntmen, you know, from the ones that are just doing it, saying, "Hey, we have a job to do," type of thing. Like, you know, agreed. Yes. So the last question I got for you is: uh, Do you have any future projects in the works, or anything that you would like to promote and let like our readers know? I don't really at the moment. Um, Nothing that, that's really uh, public that I can talk about that much. Right. I have a couple things in the works, 
but nothing really that's ready for the public. Awesome. So you heard that? Um, he doesn't have anything he's able to discuss now. It is obviously because of NDA agreements. So if you want to know what Jeffrey's up to, you can go to his IMDb page, and whenever that's updated, you'll be able to see what he has coming out. Yes, please. Definitely. Thank you so much for your time, Jeffrey. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Let awesome. me know uh, when, when you got something for me to promote for this project. Awesome. I definitely will. Thank you very much. You have a nice Thank rest you. of your day. You as well. All right, Have thanks. a good day. Yep, bye.